instrumentation index is a useless document instrumentation index is basically nothing but a dump of pn id instrumentation index requires no brains no logic and no research i leave this up to you to answer after the end of the video so let's start with understanding how an instrumentation index is made three important parameters are required in any instrumentation control loop the sensor the controller and the final control element so let's put them together of how these would look in any typical pnid try to plot an instrumentation index by seeing the three most important parameters first you might agree that loop number and tag number are important but you might think what is so useful in loop order let us look into that so before that if you see these three are basically the tags but if you see there's another fourth one you see that hh written here near the controller that stands for the high high alarm so even that has to generally be documented in an index to know what are the alarms that are available these tags are not arranged in an haphazard fashion these are connected to each other if you see so they are part of one single loop that is why loop number is so important so the loop number is put after the tag number to understand that these tags belong to a particular loop but if you see here our tag is first mentioned is a control valve then a transmitter then an alarm and then a controller but is it really in this order no the signal first flows from the transmitter which is the sensor then it goes to your control system from a control system if alarm is required then an alarm is generated or if not required then the signal goes to your control valve which controls the final element or the final process now the alarms can sometimes be at the end of the loop it depends on the customer and your design preferences but let's imagine this to be the order now let us try to order the loop based on loop order here the index seems to be very well aligned that is why loop order is very important if you miss at the start of the project at the end you will realize how difficult it is to manage when it's a mega project to deal with then you have the next important thing which is the io available the io is only about control system at the center of the focus anything that enters into the control system will be considered to be an input anything that goes out of the control system will be considered to be an output and for example if an analog signal enters here it will be called as an ai if a digital signal enters it will be called as di digital input similar is for ao and do analog output and digital output we are already clear that the transmitter will give an analog signal which is generally 4 to 20 milliampere which goes to your control system from a control system an analog signal of 4 to 20 milliampere will go to your control valve now we document these IOs into the instrument index, but what about the FIC? FIC stands for flow indicating controller. So if you see here, this is a soft signal. Why? Because neither is something coming inside the control system nor something is going outside. So if you see, for example, here this happens within the DCS itself, which is going to indicate on the display. Hence, it is a soft signal. The alarms are also being generated inside the DCS. Again, they are soft signals. There is nothing entering or exiting the system this is the basis to purchase your control system service description you cannot put some random description for all of these tags generally mega projects follow a very streamlined process for service description because that is very important let us talk about the most common ways to enter service description it is broken down into three important components the first one being is what is the fluid let us take an example so if you see here for our case let us imagine that utility water is flowing through it so the next important thing is from where is it coming and then you have is where is it going to so the from to concept comes into picture so if you see here example it comes from an equipment vv201 and then it goes to a pump suction which is 141 pc301 so an operator when he's looking at the dcs would know okay fine utility water is going from this section to this section one of the things in mega projects is you use a software like smart plant instrumentation and it has something called as a pau system here have you heard about this system if you look at any plant for example you have a new refinery that you set up a refinery is a very huge complex so it is divided into various areas so for example if you see here this is one area for example where you handle the loading there is one area where you have the crude which is entering let us call it crude area once you have the area the area is also further subdivided the area is further subdivided into units so for example if you see here for the crude unit you have maybe unit 1 2 
3 which is basically trying to crack the crude into various components in unit 1 unit 2 and unit 3 for example so this is how the area and the unit comes into picture if you would see in SPI, this is how it would look like. So if you have a new refinery, let us call it R4, for example. So you have a refinery or a plant, for example, at the top. Then you have the area like blending area, crude area, distillation area, and then you have the unit. So a tag is created inside a particular unit. This is an example. So if you see here, the HPH stands for highest plant hierarchy, MPH stands for medium plant hierarchy, and LPH stands for lowest plant hierarchy. This is how it is generally referenced in SPI. So you have the plant area and the unit. So in this way, a particular tag is identified with respect to PAU philosophy. If you have enjoyed the video, Please note there are important things available such as knowing the hookup diagrams have to be put into it, heat tracing diagrams have to be put in. There are a lot of common mistakes that engineers make. If you want all of those details covered, then comment in the sections and I will add another part 2 to the video where I will explain all of those details. But if you are interested to know how an instrument data sheet is made, then you have this video here that will be genuinely very valuable to you. You can click the link here and get to that video. I'll meet you there.